Well, hello there, you guys. I'm still in day two, getting ready to go on day three of being sick with COVID. Uh, <clears throat> I am up. I've been off and on sleeping all day. But we're going to go into our Bible today, King James. Of course, you see two of them up there. Let's see what I say. Okay. Yep, two. Um, so we're going to go ahead. December 17th. Keep praying and believing in God. What's up? Okay. All right. And then we're going to close that out. And now I don't want to learn more. God and yourself. Live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present, in this present world. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly. In this present world. This was from Titus 2, 11 through 12. That is chapter 2, 11th verse and the 12th verse. Yes. So our inspiration, our inspiration as um, Christians, we know of the grace that God has shared with us freely so that we may be able to overcome sin. We have a part to play too and take it action where need be. God has given us all we need to live uprightly, but it is our responsibility to live it out. Godliness should always be our standard. <coughs> As always, I try to commit this to myself first and then commit it to you. And let me read it. And I'm going to probably, let's see. <coughs> commit it to myself first. Dear God, I ask that you help me to always act in the right manner. Father, I desire to be godly in all my ways. And I know that you have given me all I need in order to do so. Lord, may you help me in times where I seem like I'm straying. Guide me back to your way, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, I ask... Lord, I come to you right now, asking you for the for help for those out there who uh, would like to well is asking for help in the um, being in the right manner in the acts in the right manner. Father, I desire to be godly. We desire to be godly in all our ways and I know and we know that you have given to us all that we need in order to do so Lord may we help may you help us in the times where it seems like we are strained guide us back to your way Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, thank God for the reading of the word. I just want you all to know that I am still pushing along. And, uh, this has been a battle, but the battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. And I laid this down at his feet when I first woke up and didn't feel good. I, you know... Um, I'm 
fighting this out at home. I'm still trying to do my daily stuff. Take care of my grandbabies and my son. It's hard. It's super hard. I mean, super hard. And... uh, Learn about crypto and get paid as you learn with Coinbase Earn. We've paid out. So... Today is Friday. (coughs) So, um, keep praying for me as I pray for you guys. I'm always standing in the gap. Um, The one thing I just want to say is, even though I'm sick, this is like the natural way of life. But at the same time, this is not the the normal sick, like we got COVID going around and this is what's happening to me right now for the second time. And it's not as bad as it was the first time. And I'm going to keep saying that because I've already been vaccinated and it's made it a lot easier for me to manage it. It's still terrible. I still have moments where I can't breathe, but I know how to handle it from the first time I had it. But the only difference is is I'm not struggling to breathe. It's just from time to time I'll get congested to the point where it's hard to breathe. But, um, yeah, Um, this time around, being vaccinated is a lot different than not being vaccinated. Um, I wish people would get out of this mindset that this is all a ploy uh, to get us exterminated or... Um, I mean, come on, this taking out more than just us as colored folks, um, it's taking out everybody. It doesn't matter what race you are. And if you going on conspiracy, uh, take a look and do more research because this is not just wiping out our colored people. It's color. It's really wiping out the world. So and if you read Revelations and read that, you know, as as closely and divide it up rightfully, um, you'll see the um, the underlying mysteries of that of the re- Revelations. Because being that I am spiritually sound, and I can hear and I can see <coughs> from God. You all have to understand, you can't be surface catchers on this. Not at all. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> so a lot of people are getting hit right now. And those that are spiritually sound, as I am, you know that this is nothing but, uh, you know, a test to see where our faith is. And my faith is still in God. Um, I'm not going nowhere. I still have a purpose to serve. I have a seven-year-old son that's spiritually mine. And um, he's only seven years old. And he's here so I can, you know, prepare him for first a better life and a life in Jesus. So I've been teaching him every day. It's been a power struggle. Because I'm like trying to uh, reverse a lot of different things that has been taught to him and things that he has seen he thinks it's okay to do before he got to me. So uh, this is going on two years. It'll be two years next year in August. So I just want you all to stay prayerful. You know, because we're in this pandemic together. We're not all going through different things. And we're all getting hit either with ourselves or we've got people who have have uh, COVID, uh, whatever mutation, vir- um, uh, what you call it? Whatever mutation is in, variant, whatever variant is out there. I mean, because it's mutating all the time. So, um, we're actually seeing um, the flu 
named over and over again where it didn't have a name before and it's got different levels to it and at some point if you really pay attention this has been predicted for years and years and years and if you ever look at documentaries back in look at um what you call that uh ancient aliens where they talking about this kind of stuff is coming like you cannot say that this is a, a ploy for the government because that means the whole world <coughs> is committing spiritual suicide right now. In a, in a matter of speaking, we are. We're, we're committing spiritual suicide because we don't know where we belong when you all you had to do is believe in Jesus Christ that died in our, for our sins and um and then make that decision to follow the word of God and guess what your life would change um and as i told you on many occasions you know you just have to let God do it you know that's what i did and i'm going to keep up with <laughs> 11 a.m. in the morning october 31st 2021 this year Right before I turned 50 next month, God had to take the wheel completely. And I am very, very happy that he did because I could not have done what I'm doing by myself right now. So, um, and I'm bold, y'all. I'm bold before you guys. I'm bold before God. I'm radical. I'm going to put it out there, like it or not. Um, if you think it's wrong, you're a traditionalist, you're stuck in a religious mindset, which is that too is a sin. God is not in a box. He's never been in a box. And if you got him in a box, guess what? He's not in the box. <laughs> you're going to be in a box if you keep up with the foolishness that you all are, are out here doing, like... You're just lawlessly doing whatever the heck you all want to and think that it's okay that you're going to rest with God. No, brimstone is waiting for you. It's not a heaven or hell that I can put anyone in. It's not a judgment. It's the truth. <coughs> Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. And you can only follow him to get to God, So, the Father. So, look. We cannot keep playing games like this. <clears throat> this video wasn't even supposed to go this way. But we're going to go ahead. Get out of this. And then we're going to go to the devotion. Oh, we still on this one. So we don't have to do this today. Let's see what. Uh, where did I stop at? So right now, I am taking a journey through the Bible <coughs> from Genesis to Revelation chapter by chapter so right now I'm on chapter 29 let's see what that says Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east and he looked and behold as well in the field and lo there were three flocks of sheep lying by it for out of that well they watered the flock the flocks and a great stone was upon the well's mouth okay we're gonna read that again later and thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the whale's mouth, and the water, and watered the sheep. Oh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. And put the stone again upon the whale's mouth in this in his place. And Jacob said upon them, My brethren, what is be ye? And they said, Uh of Herod are we and he said upon them know ye Levin 
the son of Nahor. Nahor, okay. Uh, and they said, we know him. And he said upon them, is he well? And they said, he is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, Rachel, his daughter, comes with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered together, and until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. Ever. While he yet spake, spake with the Rachel, came with her father's sheep, and he kept, and she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob and Rachel, Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban. Is my, his mother's brother that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of, Jacob's, of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a, a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my son, I mean my brother, uh, shalt thou therefore serve me for naught. I can't say that word. <laughs> Uh, tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The, the name of the eldest daughter. <coughs> the, uh, Le, Leia, Leia. And the name of the youngest was Rachel. Leia, Leia, Leia or Leah was tender-eyed. But Rachel was beautiful and well favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Laban said, It is better that I that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served for seven years for Rachel and then and they seemed Unto and they seemed unto him, but a few days for the love he had for her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, my days are fulfilled, and I may go into unto her. Um, and Laban gathered together all the men in of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him. And he went to went in on her, went on in unto her. And Laban gave in unto his daughter Leah, uh, Zipa, Zipa, I got it. His maid. Once I do this on my video action, the the video through the journey of um, Genesis, I'll be able to pronounce that name right, for uh, a maid servant. And it came to pass that it, in the morning, behold, it was Leah. 
And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done unto me? To, did, did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore these has thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be uh, so done in the, our country to give the youngest before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee uh, also to, for the service which thou served with me yet seven years, seven other years. And Jacob did and fulfilled her, her, her week, and he gave. Rachel to his daughter to wife him Rachel his daughter to wife also and Laban gave uh, to Rachel his daughter but uh, uh, Bella a uh, Bela by Bill Billa Bill be Bia be be <laughs> and his maid servant to be her maid. And he went in also on Rachel and also on Rachel also Rachel and he loved also Rachel more than Le Leah has served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb and but Rachel was barren. Wow, that's a, that's a lot right there. And, uh, let me say something. Y'all got to stop having preferences out here. Uh, because your greatest gift could be someone who is not a preference that you look at. Um, not that the person is ugly or anything like that. It's like, uh, tender to me is like, not your, you're not attracted to that person. Um, they don't have the look that you're looking for. I never want to call anyone ugly because we're all, all made in God's image. Um, but we have to watch out on how we judge people by the cover and not by what's on the inside of a person. Because because of this, I look at this and I'm getting that what you thought was good for you, it couldn't produce. And which you thought was not your type or your better half, um, it opened up for you and gave you gifts or gave you children that you want it, but at the same time, you didn't want the person. So this is where I feel like um, we lay with people that we think we might want to be with, and then it don't turn out to be what you thought. And um, it's not that the preference was not right. It was right at the time that you picked that person to lay with. But then you just get fed up and settle and turn and you turn to someone who you find out is a better fit for you and but you still not attracted. So you were sitting up there talking about what am I doing wrong? Well, you went for a preference and that and that wound was closed up. They can't give you what you want at that particular time. And you go and you lay down with someone else because this person can't produce. And this is who you want. You go lay down with someone else. Even though this story is kind of unbalanced with me right now and what I'm saying, it's just what I'm looking at. You have to be careful what you open yourself up to and how you judge people because you can't judge a book by its cover. And your preferences is not what you're going to fall in love with. 
You're going to fall in love with someone who is going to actually have everything you need and more, even if it's not a big girl or someone with blonde hair and hazel green eyes, <laughs> such as myself, because um, I belong to someone else. But everyone keep trying to come to me. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, I'm I'm the preference of many people who are looking for a light skinned girl with blonde hair and hazel green eyes and I have a lot to offer to a lot of people that will come into my life but would I be a fit for you? Um, no because my fit is who I'm going to spend the rest of my life with in these next 50 plus years. And um, I am not going to divulge who that could be because I'm still going through some some therapy issues uh, about my second husband passing. And um, this person has been around me for quite some time. And... We ain't got it all together yet, so but we are making plans. So whatever I feel like this person has been in my life, all my life, around my life, some kind of way, floating around there somewhere. Especially being older than me, he's been floating around, <laughs> and guess what? I uh, am. You can't marry someone who's already married spiritually. <laughs> I can't even ex explain that completely. But I went here to tell you that your preferences will it make you end up somewhere where you don't want to be. And when that person you get with is not uh, all that you need at that particular point. I bet you by the time I get to the end of this, her womb will have opened up and made babies for him while you made babies somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. So, Alea conceived and bared a son, and she was called his name Reuben. For she said, suddenly the Lord has looked upon my, fix, um, looked upon my affliction. Now they're for my husband will love me. That's another thing. Women. Y'all need to stop thinking. Having babies for these boys out here. Is not going to make them love you. They'll leave you quicker. Than a, than a, a heartbreak. Um, so. Yeah. And that's a heartbreak right there. When you don't have the, the father of your children. What are you and your child that you all made together? Yeah, you can't do that. Uh, see, I'm getting stuff in, like right now. Each verse is starting to talk to me. As she conceived again and bare the son. See, y'all keep making babies with these women that you don't really don't want. And the real woman that you want that can't give you what you need. And you just keep going different ways why the right person is sitting in your face um and you you shot for her at first and now that she shut up in her in her um she's barren you have made children with other people let's see how this story is you know what i'm saying so and she can see another and buried her son and said because the lord has heard that i was hated he has therefore given me this son uh, also, and his name, was it Simeon? Yep. <laughs> I had an ex named Simeon. Okay, yeah. And that's weird. Like, the people I've been dating before, and they all have biblical names. It's crazy. <laughs> Simeon. Okay, so... And she conceived again. Y'all keep, she keeps making his babies. And bear 
a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, uh, was his name called Levi. And she just conceived again. Keep me. Why do you? Why do you men keep doing this? Where's Rachel and all of this? I guess we'll see in the next story, won't we? Um. Now, okay. And she conceived again and bare the son. And she said, "Now I will be praised. Now I will praise the Lord." Therefore, she has called his name Judah. And left barren. All right, so she was left barren. Now she didn't had four kids, four boys. Wow! And now she's barren. <coughs> Amazing. Oh wow! I'm going to the wrong thing. Um, what just happened to? Here we go. Okay, so we're going to open this back up. Okay. We have finished the first chapter of Genesis. <coughs> and when Rachel saw that she buried Jacob, no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or, or else I die. Jacob, Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel and he said, "I am I in God's stand who has withheld from the, the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold, my maid Bella, I gotta say this right. Um, and God, I mean, uh, go in upon her and go in onto her, and she shall, oh, excuse me, and she shall uh, bear up upon my knees that I may also have children by her. Okay. I'm going to end this right here because I got to, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm reading this, and it, this is kind of hitting me in today's world right now. And we have good women out here who cannot give these the men that they love what they truly want. And they're doing everything in their power to make this man happy by offering another woman <coughs> to come into their marriage and make a child that they can make together. I mean, like, if you cannot have children, you can't have children. Okay? When God is ready for you to have more children, you will have more children. Especially if you haven't had any type well you know what I can't say that either because it's been people even in today's times over in Africa overseas I haven't heard nobody here in the states um, their womb just regenerated and they was able to have children again God could do anything God could do whatever he wants to he could open you up even when you think you can't be open. So I I'm 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 for sure, for sure that whatever God wants, he will um bring it to you. <laughs> whatever he wants you to have, he will give it to you. So I'm gonna end this right here. Um we gotta stop fighting against God. And what he wants for our lives. Because 
our preferences is not going to be our blessing. Do you understand? Our preferences are not going to be our blessings. Um, what you preference for might close up their their gifts to you because that's not where you're supposed to be. I pray that you see and understand what I'm talking about. Like I said, this is kind of uh, what God has put on my heart to tell you guys why I was reading this. And God knows who you need, who you need in your life. You got to stop looking for a men and women to force them to be something that they cannot be in your life. Um, we even in preferences, um, the most ugliest person in the world could be your best blessing. You just got to stop operating in the world's, uh, shallowness because we are shallow people (laughs) (coughs) and we are so quick to judge by the outer appearance of things than what's on the inside of someone. I have never been this type of person. I really haven't ever had a preference. Um, I've dated all kinds of uh, men. I think the only... No, I had a a Chinese little boyfriend before. I was a kid, though. I was a kid kid. He was just cute. Uh, You know, we didn't do anything. We played together. I played with his little sister. I even had maybe one, two, three, four white boyfriends. Did we get anywhere, you know, sexually? No. Uh, Might have kissed them or, or, you know, schoolboy kissed them. Not no passionate kiss or nothing like that. Um, I have dated Latinos. I think I had about two of those. Uh... And I just love our, I love our, our colored, um, our colored men, you know, and I don't know why I got into bigger guys, but I like smaller guys. Um, and goodness, I have preferences. I'm not really, I mean, I don't have a preference, preference. (coughs) But what I have right now is totally out of what I envision me having. And what I've had as husbands. My first husband, I didn't pick him. My mama did that. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to die with that one. And then my second husband, I picked him. I mean, my baby was a dark, dark, dark guy. And uh, I loved him, loved him, loved him. Um, but I'm coming to find out that I have never been truly, truly in love with anyone. I just have love for people. I love everyone. I would do anything and every and everything for anyone I'm with. But the being in love thing this time around, I have I'm I'm almost fifty years old, y'all. And I've been in love with this person for some time now. And to get it back the way that I give it is amazing to me because we're both givers. Nobody's a, you know, one person's not a taker and and, and the other person's a giver. We're both givers of each other. And um, he is not a preference. But he has everything that I'm looking for. That and I'm everything he's looking for, and we just found each other by accident. It really was an accident. I mean, it's it's weird, but it's not weird. And if you keep looking for preferences, you'll never find your soulmate. 
Amen? Amen. You have a good and blessed day. Remember, God, I love you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. I may not like your ways, but I love you anyway. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. And um, you got to come by him and believe in him. He'll never leave you or forsake you when you do. He'll never drop you unless you drop yourself. And the only way you can do that is become a like lukewarm. And then he'll spew you out. In Jesus' name, you cannot straddle the fence. You either love him or you don't. Believe in him then you, or you don't. Um, it's a heaven and hell waiting for all of us. It's all about with the one you create right now before you get there. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.